fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you want to know, then tune in, folks, because this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use. So sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or carp, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong. They'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Now, welcome everyone to Talking Fishing. Big show, as always, coming away. Catch of the week. There's some monster trout, as you would expect from the Goulburn River. Uh, product of the week, we're going to have a look at a cracking rod range that's always been good, and it just got better. Hot spots, all the other stuff. The warm weather is almost here. Almost. Adds. It just like, te teases, yeah. teases us with a day here and there, yeah. Yeah. and then we go back to a little bit of cold. But I suppose that's spring, isn't it? Yeah, it is spring. Um, I tell you what, there's a, a fair bit of um, news tonight. Too. In fact, there's a lot of bit news. Going on, probably yeah. the most amount of news we've had on the bit show. Going on. Bit about kayaks tonight on Upper Colibbin uh, Reservoir because things we're aren't being going discriminated so sweet against. There. You like that? We're being discriminated against. Oh, I don't think uh -huh. they're. Oh, there's some hold-up. I don't know what it is. Um, I actually wrote to the board today, but we'll talk to you about kayaks and that. Yep. Trelly. Yep. What the hell is going on? <laughs> no. Whereabouts? The, the Goulburn River. Yeah. Um, oh. The, 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 yeah. the Victorian Fisheries Authority yep. invest in stonker trout to yep. get the crowds up there. Mm -hmm. It's like the left hand's not talking to the right hand because the water authority, whoever or whoever, is putting an environmental flow down the Goulburn River. You can't even get bank access to fish for them. On the back of some other allocation, on the back mm -hmm. of torrential downpours. Well, what right. the, the hell is the going ever on? Been? Welcome to the uh, freshwater fishing world. <laughs> <laughs> right, seriously, the Goulburn, I went, I went past there. Yeah. On uh, after Snobs Creek board meeting last week, yep. last Thursday, and yeah, there's no bank access because no. the water's so hot. What is? Why are they doing an environmental flow? Um, oh, I could say a lot of things, but <laughs> we'll just, just say, say one. The, yeah. Have you got a simple answer? Uh, simple answer is does it rhyme with banker? Is they they give me the they give me their idea why they're doing it, but on top of a uh, an IVT, which is the inter value transfer, I'm not yeah. too sure what what's going on. Someone suggested to me that it's to germinate the seeds on the bank. A bit of germination. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, but if it rained, can like it's been a bit. Of hang rain, on, hang yeah. on. Well, yeah. trout opening was uh, wet. Well, well yeah. I'll tell you because I was at the Snobs Creek Advisory Board yeah. meeting last Thursday, yeah. and we look at the monitoring and the turbidity of the Snobs Creek because of the logging upstream, yep. and it was the most significant rainfall of the year yeah. was trout opening and the week after are you saying to me they're putting water down there to wet the banks to germinate the seeds even though there's been a pretty yeah, much it's the it's biggest a rainy, rainy weekend ever yeah correct correct but, but that doesn't yeah. make sense uh, well it doesn't because the, the, what they're trying to seed is that is that lower lower part of the bank too we're not talking about the whole the whole bank yeah just the lower part um, so, so the bit that was already underwater? Yeah, and I get on a lot of these meetings and um, it's probably a bit uh, unfair of me to say certain things but I, because it goes against what's, what's sort of at the table when we say mm. things, but I, do, I still can't understand some of the methodology behind one mm. flow after another, especially when we get inter-valley transfers and they're, they're not talking to each other. Yeah. There's a bit to work so, out, isn't there? Mm. Folks, let's have a look at what's been caught by the people at home. It's time for Catch of the Week. Catch of the Week, brought to you by Shimano. It's this time of year where we get some beautiful snapper photos sent to us, boys, and then everyone goes, oh, the snapper are on. <laughs> but no. realistically, yeah. it's, about, being caught. it's about one in 1,000 yeah. boats that are out there. But I tell you what, being caught the one in 1,000 uh, is a young man who does send us a few photos every now and then. Chris Preston, a 7.8 kilo snapper good caught fish. in the Bolton Channel in Western Port. That's a good fish. That that's a, a, that's fish, a big one, isn't it? Yeah, notorious for yeah. big early fish, Boltons. Yeah, okay. And Western Port. Port, sorry. Yeah, well yeah, done, Chris. Yeah, that's Western Port always fires notorious. a little bit earlier yep. than Port Phillip. Yeah. I don't know why. Um, the next one, it is... The time for big squid and is. everyone's talking about difficult conditions to get out. Full moon last week, early, mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the rain doesn't help. But the big southern calamari are coming into the bay to spawn. And uh, quite a few reports from around Port Arlington. Yep. Uh, one that we're going to feature on the show, Neil McKenzie. Got a beautiful one in 
Port Arlington. I think his home must be there because it's the kitchen of Port uh, Arlington. Doesn't count. Oh. Private access. Yep. Catch hey. him in a kitchen like that. Private yeah. access. You only caught that in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> it's Lordy. a big calamari. That's a it big is. calamari. He's done it, done well to keep it with a little bit of colour in it. A bit of old school overalls there too. Yeah. Good pick. Might be a former be Ford, to Ford worker or yeah. a carpenter or something like yeah. that. <laughs> They'll come back one day. The, good, there's a trend, I reckon. On. Neil, just hang on to them for another 20 <laughs> years. They'll come back. Uh, all right. Um, another good place for calamari at the moment. That, that, that western side seems to be going pretty good. Sure, really? yeah, it actually Charlton. is, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's right. Caroline Springs. Uh, John Haristus. Uh, a beautiful calamari. Oh, that's a good one. His uh, wife sent that one in. Yep. Nice. That's a nice fish. They look unreal at that side. Photograph so nice and fresh on the boat. That's right. That's a Carolina calamari. Yep. Carolina. Carolina. Good Carolina Springs. <laughs> All right. <laughs> let's uh, let's go to the freshwater boys because there's been some sensational it freshwater has. catches. Even with the flow? Even with the flow, Even yeah. Even with the flow. But they're all around, and don't forget, and we're going to talk about this later on in Fisheries News, okay. the amount of lakes around Victoria that have been stocked yep. for the school holidays. Mm-hmm. And one of them is uh, Spaven Drive Lake out near Sunbury. Josh Bull. Uh, let's have a look at Josh's fish now. Not a bad fish. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not a bad fish. I heard on the grapevine, though, that there was no fishing rod involved in catching <laughs> that fish that he actually uh-huh. grabbed it as it was coming off the truck so oh, but uh, josh gloves. doesn't matter how you caught it mate as <laughs> long as you took it home and ate it or whatever and um ah nice fish josh well done yep. he's good size fish being yeah he's good color isn't he? we might get josh on the show talk through yeah. the technique yeah whispering revolution or whispering trout was it or yeah. uh, tickling the old style was tickling yeah, tickle, uh, yeah. good yeah. sport yeah. josh i tell you yeah, yeah, josh um, tickler. all right let's get up to, <laughs> let's get up to the eildon pondage because that's been stocked with some lovely fish as well yes, has, aaron yes. bickers got up there during the week for a lovely rainbow trout well, in eildon right. pondage well done Aaron. Aaron looks like he's a bit taken back by it himself. He's surprised at his catch, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he's about to fall back. I'm not sure. Because it's too heavy. <laughs> he's about, you know, like he unbalanced and he's about to fall back. Yeah. Great yeah. fish, bud. Great fish. Yeah. And All the right. pondage, is, pondage is a great place. It's, it's safe for kids. Yeah, You've got fishing kids well out too. There. Yeah, just, yeah. Just come up there. Yeah. yeah. Now, we all know, yep. seven tonne, 2,000 fish got put in around that Eildon area. Yeah. 1,500 into the Goulburn River yep. and... Um, there was a gentleman who got a stonker last Thursday. <sighs> These names test me sometimes. Got Goran Bozino- Bozinovski. Boz- Bozinovski. Bozinovski. Yep. Goran. He'd be watching tonight. He'd be yep. so proud. That's a good fish. That actually looks like a skinny fish. I'm it looks telling really you. Long, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, it wasn't skinny. It was a long fish. Yeah. yeah. It's a big fish. Um. And I've got to say, I just happened to come across Goran and I took that photo. So, yeah, well right. done, Goran. It I was is. very, very jealous of you. That's showing the height of the river behind him. No, it's, it's, hard, um, no that's the caravan park in, at Thornton in the background. Yep. And there's just virtually no bank access because of the high water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's disgusting mm. that the water authorities are not talking to fisheries. And you know, even if it was for a month, yep. if they just let trout opening had a steady low flow yeah, just to access the bit. banks, be able to walk, at catch At least get us through the school holidays. Lucky to be room for three yeah. people in the town of Thornton. Yeah, at least get us through the school holidays. Yeah. Yeah. All right, another person got up there. I'm going to start <laughs> straying there a little bit. Another person, David Montebello, got a stonker trout in the Goulburn River as well. Oh. That is a, now that's not a skinny that's, fish, that's that That's not one. a skinny fish. No. He's Eddie. been to McDonald's drive through three yeah. times in the same day. And they, they, you see that, that the tail fin on that's been sort of like that bottom and top has been sort of worn. Cause it, you know, it's a... Um, Stockfish, stockfish, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. how does that happen? Wears out on those rocks that we discovered, you took us through up at the um, hatchery. Oh. Yeah, no, yeah, that's how they, like a natural oh, yeah, trout's yeah. got the four fins and yep. then it's like they're it dragging their toes on the concrete. Yeah, or something like yeah, that. yeah probably are. Yeah. Uh, if you'd like to send in a, a pick of your catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV, email your fishing pick to info at fish.com.au. Go, go high. High. Yeah, I want to go fishing. And we apologise to all the Collingwood supporters that <laughs> Chloe is saying go pies. Congratulations oh, to Chloe, Chloe Malloy. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, I felt for you, Chloe. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, well, no, no, Chloe played in the VFL, VFL Grand w. Final. First time that Collingwood's oh, won the VFL Premiership. Yep. yep. Well Congratulations, Chloe. Chloe. Yeah. So, Good job. I'm uh, going to get it back on the show. At yes. some stage. So mm-hmm. trying Definitely. to get her and uh, Basha Hooley on the show. Oh, nice. Yeah. Anyway, oh, good. and we should... 
we should also say, well, last week we did say the Worf Girls uh, Women Erect Fishing Network yep. were going to come on the show, but they're postponed for one week. So Next week. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we will get Chloe and uh, Bad Paisan in the real grand final. Coming up next, Fisheries News. <gasps> fisheries News, including some big news for boat ramps next on Talking Fishing. A little cup. Talking Fishing. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you've really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing. And today's the day you're going to wet a line. Cause every day's a good day Stop wishing Every day's a chance to drift away Drift away Every day's a good day for fishing See you down and tackle world today Talking fishing, talking fishing Nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing Live from the studios of Channel 31 Melbourne It's now time for some very fishy news now, welcome back to Talking Fishing. Uh, the headline, let's get into it because there's a lot of news, boys. Okay, the I'll headline go. is Boating Infrastructure yep. uh, Management Review Kicks Off. The Andrews Labor Government is set to begin a review of the management arrangements of recreational boating infrastructure in Port Phillip and Western Port Bays to help make boating even better across Victoria. The review to be undertaken by Deloitte, boys, so we're announcing yep. that tonight that Deloitte will be doing this. We'll hear from recreational boaters, current infrastructure managers, service providers, <coughs> excuse me, and relevant agencies, and we'll investigate options to improve management arrangements. The Port Phillip and Westport Boating Infrastructure Management Review is expected to be finalised by April 2020, so it's a fair review. For more information about the Port Phillip and Westport Boating Infrastructure Management Review, visit betterboating.vic.gov.au. But when I looked at that, there was nothing up there about it. So I just sort of explained it a little bit more. Yep. Boys. Um, what it's going to do, this, this is comprehensive. And, and I know we just get here and talk about headlines and that, but mm. this is big. Right, so this is a massive review of all the boating infrastructure in Port Phillip and Western Port. Okay. And, and a look at, uh, it'll identify current issues with management of recreational boating infrastructure. So things that aren't dredged properly, thing, the, right. the concrete's cracked, there's a drop off at the end, that sort of stuff. Uh, it'll, uh, it'll involve a release of a discussion paper, uh, which will outline the current issues and to receive feedback from stakeholders about the management of recreational boating infrastructure. So it'll identify all the things that are wrong, but it's gonna ask the public about, what do we do about it? How, how often, you know, I mean, one of my arguments for, for Tyrone, uh, not for Tyrone, for Tukaruk, Yep. Is that it should be open all year round? Yeah, definitely. And they'll and the, and this will identify that you know that that boat ramp is only dredged once a year yep. and it only lasts six months. Yep. They'll can, then go to the public and say, well, what do you think? You know, so it's it's comprehensive. Um, it'll assess the current management practices, an assessment of recreational boating assets in Port Phillip and Westmore. So it's going to make sure it lists them all yep. and options for management improvements, including consideration of a de dedicated authority, because mm -hmm. at the moment. Better Boating Victoria have only funded the current managers for one year. Right. So what's it going to look like after one year? This review is going to tell us what it's going to look like and give you know the government some options. So a bit of important work. That's, yeah, that's there, good because so. to me that's the important part of this whole announcement. The free boat ramp yep. was the yep. you know was the sexy thing. This is what's going to change boat ramps basically. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, next one. Uh, the headline is, Patterson River Boat Ramp now fee-free. Parking and launching fees were removed from Patterson River Boat Ramp earlier this month, giving recreational water users even more reasons to celebrate the start of the boating and fishing season. Patterson River, which was made free on the 1st of September, is one of Victoria's most popular uh, boat ramps. What? 1st of September? So, yeah, it was made free on the 1st of September. So what are we reading it now? Well, What's the date? Did you, did, is, this, is this old fisheries news? Did you oh, pull, no, did you this, pull the wrong well, or old this is dated Febru Friday the 20th of September, so it takes 20 days for Better Boating to get their media releases out, I guess. Really? No, they're quick. Cause compared they're fast. To, well, compared yeah. to Delp. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like two donkeys having a race, <laughs> I'll tell you. Anyway, no, no, so it says here... Um, <laughs> 
from the 1st of September. It's a little... They just put this oh, out. I'm just checking my clock. I'm just checking my watch. Well, Delp and Beta Bone in Victoria. Yeah, They're yeah, right, a bit eh? slow on their media releases. Um, 20 days ago, uh, it was made free. And it's one of Victoria's most popular boat ramps. And it joins three other ramps in Port Phillip and Westerport that were also made free on the same day. <laughs> this is old Winning. news. just come out. Like, we, we just... As it comes out off the press, we read it. Uh, that was Stony Point, Warneat and Werribee South. Mm. These new free boat ramps join over 20 other ramps that have been made free over the last few weeks across Victoria, thanks to the government's <laughs> commitment. I think it's up to 30 <laughs> now. This is hard. In another win for boaters, the government has pledged $47.2 million. Last year. <laughs> in the state budget to implement a raft of other recreational boating improvements, including upgrading six priority ramps and reviewing boating infrastructure management arrangements in Port Phillip and Westport, which is nice. what we just talked about. Mm -hmm. Next. Right. Win. Okay, next. Oh, this is a recent one. <laughs> What's um, this dated? What's the date? No, 19th of September. Well, that's not too So, bad. anything, like it's last better. Tuesday show was the 17th, right? Yep. So, anything that's happened in the last week, we'll read out, even though what they're writing about is three and a bit weeks old. <laughs> there you go. It's, it's all good. It's all good news. Um, schools out, go catch a trout is the headline. Roeville Lakes will be stocked with catchable size rainbow trout for the September school holidays, helping more Roeville families to get outdoors and wet a line. Member for South Eastern Metropolitan, TNQ, join local fish. And I've got to say, TN's a great bloke. He was at three cut. letters, TNQ. Yeah. No. That's TN's his first name and Q is his last name. He was oh. at, were you at Karkarook? Well, that day when we put Murray Cott in? Like uh, he's champion, yeah. champion TN. Um, he good. joined local fishers and the Victorian Fisheries Authority to celebrate the stocking of 400 rainbow trout into Roeville Lakes last week. So, some of the other waters to be stocked with catchable sized trout for these school holidays include Albert Park Lake, Lilydale Lake, Casey Fields, Lake Emerald, uh, Pakenham Lake and Fern Tree Gully Quarry. Most of these waters feature improved access with access platforms, walking tracks, picnic areas and other family friendly activities, boys. That's good. Uh, a daily bag limit, a reminder to people, Trelly. Yep. When you go fishing at these <laughs> right, lakes. Right, this down there. Yeah. A daily bag limit of five trout applies to family fishing lakes, of which only two can exceed 35 centimetres. And for a full statewide list of stocked trout waters, visit vfa.vic.gov au forward slash holiday trout and I checked out yep. their website and it's actually got the information yeah. on it. Nice. Unlike no the other one. Yuri. Win, win, win. They're not. It fell out <laughs> so I can't hear them. Um, can I just say I got on that website today yep. and get onto that um, holiday trout. Over 75 lakes have been stocked. Yeah. How good's that? Yeah. Well that, imagine the truck true. that's got to deliver all that. Yeah. I mean you just don't do yeah. that overnight. Well they've got more than one truck. I, th I think they've only got two. Well, yeah, that's well, more, more than one. one. <laughs> but um, it is, look, it's a great effort. I know the um, ship's been stopped. Did you um, learn that in primary school or secondary school? What's that? The, more than one's two. Yeah, well, well, well it's just checky. Graduated from crayons. We were the other day, we were asked if they had high school at Shepparton. Yeah, they, be, I went, they had the same teacher as my mum. <laughs> <laughs> Was your mum still in the same grade? She repeat that often? Oh, no, no, it's all good. All right, we're getting personally. She was wearing uh, let's, in that let's, with that With old mate. Yeah, she did. <laughs> they will come back into fashion. What's his name? Neil McKenzie. Yeah. Those overalls will come back into fashion. Mm. We're getting yelled at now. Um, good for talking rubbish. Um, Vic Fish Kids Program is coming up, not this weekend, but next. Um, Seymour Goulburn Park. Yep. Sunday, 6th of October, 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. There will be 200 free rod and reels to be given out on the day, although I think last year 3,000 people turned up. <laughs> getting early. Um, yeah. VFA is ho hosting the free events. They're fun and free and everything is provided so youngsters can cast a line and try fishing in a safe and supportive environment. And if you're up near Shepparton, Saturday, 7th of December, Victoria Park Lake, Shepparton. Charlie on the Convoy get, Patrol. Get, um, Absolutely. Put that one in your diary. Let's keep yeah. moving along because they're yelling at us and we've got lots of news to get through. Yeah. The Peninsula Snapper Challenge is on again. Um, it's it's going to run over nine days this year in Western Port and Port Phillip Bay, 2nd to 10th of November. It's uh, There's open junior and kayak divisions. It, it, what are kayaks, not opens or juniors? Are they? They're yeah. just weird people, aren't they? Representative. Uh, Kayaks are weird people. I don't ignore mm. kayaks. Over twenty thousand dollars in prizes. One in five entrants will win a prize. Every junior entrant wins a Wilson Rod and Reel and Black Magic Snapper Pack. Uh, presentations at the Frankston Bombers Footy Club. 
Peninsula Snapper Challenge com. Get on their Facebook page. All the info for that. Uh, it's the premier competition mm. now. Great for, competition. Yeah. yeah. Right run. Right over a month. Yep. It's sort of ten days. Isn't it? Uh, this one here. Oh, this this is up to date. <laughs> this is up What's to date. Hot off press. Uh, today. Today. Yeah. Hot off the press. Yeah. Um, no more. F- no more fees. <laughs> I just want the confusion setting. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, they're doing well on the over the other side of the glass. They're doing well tonight, I tell you. Kev. Um, <laughs> boaters and anglers on the Ballerine Peninsula will find it easier and cheaper to get out on the water thanks to the state government. Member for Ballerine and great friend of Talking Fishing, Lisa Neville, today announced the removal of boat ramp fees at Queenscliff Boat Ramp. Wow, we well, that was that was the, the party, tough that yeah. was the tough nut to crack. That was the jewel in the Bellarine crown. Yeah, yeah. So it's happened. Uh, goes on to say the Queenscliff boat ramp will also. How's this for news? The Queenscliff boat ramp will also be upgraded, and Thompson Beryl Landscape Design have been awarded a contract to develop the concept designs. The concept design will look at widening the existing boat ramps constructing additional ramps to ease congestion and speed up launching and retrieving and expanding the car park to accommodate mm. more cars and boat trains. Who would have thought that yep. that would have happened in Queenscliff? Yeah. Bang. That's good. That's great. Like more ramps and more parking space. I mean, that's yeah. what, what we're asking for. What we've been asking for. We've got, we've got stuff hot off the pressy. What's Boy. tomorrow's date? <laughs> well, <laughs> this, is a, no, this is a rumour that comes through. It's almost like it's the rumor oh. file. Like the thread of your rumour file. Okay. Um, that a contingent, we don't have the full facts, but this I'm um, just uh, contingent. A contingent. It's like a posse. Of Victorian yeah. fisheries officers, Snobs Creek staff, and Arthur Ryler Institute, Institute, Institute staff are heading Trunkist. to Nick, Nick. the Darling River <laughs> yeah. to rescue Murray Cod and Golden Perch. Big. Oh, ooh, okay. Big That's brood good. stock. They're going to rescue them because the Darling yep. is going to go dry. Yep. They're going to rescue them. They're going to put them into Victorian farm dams as potential brood right. stock for the new shepherd and hatchery. It's hot, hot off the press, that that's is. That's real good. That so. is hot off the press because I heard a couple of little rumours that were going around. Yep, it's happening. And isn't that fantastic where you can get two governments, or yep. uh, state governments, yep. to actually do things together Yep, um, and put some differences aside. One, one's in deep poo and the other one wants the brood stock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but even so, you know, no, no, it is a good yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good right. thing. Exactly. So I yeah. wish them all the best for yeah. their relocation. Da- the Darling River is going to be in big trouble yeah. this summer. So Absolutely. anyway, uh, we must um, wind up there. Coming up next, product of the week: a classic fishing rod just gets better. Next on Talking Fishing. Talking fishing. Product of the week brought to you by Tackle World. Talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. Alright, another award winning product from the latest after release show is sitting in front of us here tonight, boys. And one of the most popular rods we've seen for the last quite a few years now just got a massive, massive upgrade. The new Therese is in stores now. Uh, Huge upgrades. This isn't just a new colour and a couple of new guides to make it sound like a different rod. Mm-hmm. It has gone through almost a complete overhaul. So the the biggest component to these now is the addition of high power X and spiral X. Okay. So this is up to date current Japanese technology. We've got a little bit of a slide to throw to to give you a brief overview of what it is. But basically it allows Shimano to start with a thinner blank. Spiral X gives it a spiral uh, graphite tape weave both on the inside and the outside of the blank which gives it I guess supreme strength but keeps the weight down so it stops any form of twisting or warping through the blank under high load. It then goes on to give it a coat of high power X which is a cross weave of tape over the outside. This is a really really crazy process because they can manipulate the rod yep. to the fish that you want to catch via that tape. Mm. That is how fine-tuned these rods are, and High Power X gives them the ability to do that. Now, depending on the width of the tape yep. and also how tightly they basically weave that tape on, mm-hmm. with that crisscross pattern over the top, they can tune the rods for the specific actions that they're trying to achieve. 
another big addition to the range is the whole the whole grip setup has mm. been completely redesigned. So, uh, listen, rods are hard to show on television, but the grips here have been moulded back. If if you think back to the old ones, they were very thick. They were very chunky grips. Now, though they were quite comfortable, yep. they were still quite cumbersome. Even for the lighter rods, they were still mm. quite a chunky grip. These have these have all been shaped perfectly mm. they now feel lighter as a result of a thinner grip without losing any of the feel to them and it's because of that high power high power x and spiral x construction the blank they've basically had to keep everything as light as possible yeah there's been an upgrade to the actual winch there's, it's now a locking winch so there is a small locking me mechanism at the bottom of the winch on some of the heavier models dave you've got an overhead model there yeah. that's quite heavy that goes to a full aluminium winch so that rod there has been designed yep. to hold talica 12s talica 16s mm. talica yeah. 20s so the upgraded winch on that because they are pulling some serious power k, k frame guides so yep. no tangle on the cast these really have been through a massive overhaul and if they're anything like the old rods which would just have been the biggest seller mm. in i guess a blue water rod we've seen for quite some time these are just, these just can't be touched they're so good yeah um, could we could we load one up yeah go for that, it what do we trelly hop around well, the front there yeah, yeah well, dave you just stand no, up. i'll go around the front too hopefully we'll be able to get this yeah so <coughs> we didn't practice this this is it, no, it, no, no we didn't no. this is this is six foot six mm -hmm. 50 to 150 pound. I'm not sure. 50 to what? 50 to, to 150. 150. 150. Yep. Load so, me up. So these are rated for braid. Yep. Yep. These are very, very. That's some serious power. Very man. high performance oh. rods. That's it, Mahonia, and I had it stitched up pretty well. I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. um, that now, is a serious bit of power. The white colour is gone. Yeah. They yep. are all. They are all a black cosmetic. That's as light as. Mm. And yeah, that's right, they are as light as you're ever going to find, but there's been a heap of additions to the actual models. There's now jigging models, there's casting blue water popper and stick bait models, there's the overheads which come across from the old series, there's all the six foot nine spin models which have been the most popular for us in Victoria. I think on that slide before, yeah, well, if we can get you, that slide I've, back up. I've got a sheet here actually, so there's there five, five cast mm. models. 13 spin models, three jig models, and two overheads. Yeah. So it's a comprehensive range for a heavy application blue water rod. Mm. You can find everything you need. Um, I think these are going to be the hottest product rolling into Christmas, to be mm. perfectly honest, because they From are just... From kings to tuna to... To everything. Yeah. To, to everything. If you yeah. needed in Victoria one rod that you could as close to doing everything as you wanted with the kings, mm. the tuna, uh, big gummy sharks having to hold massive amounts of lead in the tidal water of mm, Western Port yep. and Southern Port Phillip Bay. Mm. Um, the Western Port guys will change over the snapper again because they hold the weight really yep. well. There is a rod here for just about mm. every application that we yeah. deal with here in Victoria. Yeah. But I've noticed the, um, you know, the, uh, the guides, I mean they've used enough to put a guide on but they haven't overdone it with taking away weight, putting more extra weight yeah, on that's right. to take mm. away the feel of the blanket. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that's right. And, so and again, it comes down to with that high power X, they can actually tune the rods. Yeah. So they take into consider consideration things of the weight and the guides. They're not hamstrung in using, because typically speaking, K-frame mm. guides are quite heavy. Yeah. So they can affect the actions, yep. mm. but they can tune it back with high power X. Yeah. So you get the best quality guides for the job mm. without compromising the action of the rod. Mm. It's It mm. really is a very intelligent mm. process. Very nice. There you go. Yeah. Therese, cheers get to, on it. Cheers to Therese. Cheers. Oh, 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 he cut his lunch with the beers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, go. That's good. Therese. That's good. Mm. Hey, um, just to change the subject really quickly, uh, a lot of people starting to inquire, Mates Day on the Bay, which is the Future Fish Foundation's big uh, event for people with disabilities. It's on Sunday the 20th of October. Sorry, we'll put up the details next week. This is hot off the press as well. If you want to register, uh, email admin at futurefish.com.au. Tony will uh, be on the other end of that email. 20th of October, it's the third Sunday, uh, seven o'clock in the morning. If you've got a boat and you wanna bring it along and take someone out with a disability, it's a great event. Great day. 20th uh, year this year. Good and I've got yeah. a feeling Rex is gonna come along yep. to celebrate. I like it. Uh, he started it, Rex yep. Hunt Future Fish Foundation, yep. and um, he'll be along for the 20th anniversary this year. Big, Excellent. big event, so there you go. Um, Charlie, I wanna go back to mm -hmm this environmental mm. flow. Oh, here we go. Yep. No, no. So yeah. 
do you have anything to do? I mean, do, do they talk to you about it? Yeah, I actually get, um, which is which is very kind of, and they invite me along to a lot of their meetings. Yeah. Uh, which which is good because there's there's an issue of um, bank erosion, hmm. and then there's also the issue of vegetation. Yeah. With eddy flow, whether it be environmental flow, which is supposed to enhance that, and then you've got intervallic transfers. Yeah. So we beat the well, not we. The um, the study on environmental flows has been going since two thousand and three, so they've got a and lot. And they worked of it out yet? Yeah. Well, well, what do you mean the study? Well, the study behind because the the first initial thinking was more water the better the better it's going to be. Yeah. But now they're they're finding out that no, that, that it's got to be timing in this. It's got to be timing with plant uh, growth things mm. like that. Um, so they've got down to a point now where they get that. But in the last couple of years, we've had intervalley transfers. So this is sort of upsetting the, the balance of, uh, uh, I believe, is interrupting the balance of environmental flows. Mm. Now, they say they put a flow down environmental flow uh, for seeding purposes, which was the last one. Yep. And they have these uh, mats out. And in that particular mat, there's literally thousands, and the mat's not that big, mm. thousands of, of seed uh, droppings, for want of a better word, with, the, with that flow that comes down, takes it out of the, out of the, the it yep. it on these mats downstream. Um, but the thing is, with environmental flows, it's, it's based on then a grow-out period of all those seeds. But we're finding that the intervalley transfers are, are coming through. Washes them all away. Uh, either that or they're, or they're under water for a length of time that, that doesn't allow that to grow. Can they oh. be combined? So Can they be combined? Yes, but the, the, the thing is, the complicated thing is we've got different stakeholders. And this is the biggest thing. We've yeah. got a stakeholder in South Australia that wants water for the sun for the for the new nut farms. And then we've got a stakeholder that wants environmental outcomes. And then there's a stakeholder who wants to keep the lower lakes open for ungodly reasons, I can't understand, because of other things. So, so we've got these different stakeholders which have a, which have a stakeholder in, in the actual flow and bits and pieces, but it, it, nothing matches up with anything. We're finding that, that mm. the flow is actually at the wrong time of year. Hey, if you tracked the flow now on a graph yep. compared to the natural flow of the river, would it match? Upside down. There you go. Mm. I'll rest my that case. Coming up next, sense. Kramer's Mailbag. Next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. We know what you'd rather be doing. We know what you've really got in mind. We know you'd rather be out fishing. And today's the day you're gonna wet a line. Cause every day's a good day. Stop wishing. Every day's a chance to drift away. Drift away. Every day's a good day for fishing. See you down at Tackle World today. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. <laughs> Some interesting mail this week, boys. Mm -hmm. Let's kick it off. Buy something. Uh, you hey? always buy something on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's been several bits of mail on this subject, and um, we just thought I'd pick this one. Uh, this is from Carmelo from Riddles Creek. Carmelo says, uh, I was up at Colliburn Reservoir the other day, and it's closed to kayaking. I wonder why. And we've got a photo of the sign, Carmelo's sent us in. It says, uh, I wonder why. The launch ramp next to the spillway wall is easy to go over when it's spilling. It's a dumb place. So apparently where you can launch at Upper mm. Caliban Reservoir, you put your kayak, is right next to the dam wall. Yep. And the dam wall's got this big drop like yep. Ni Niagara Falls. Like extreme fishing. Why would they put the access there, right next to the, next to the dam wall? Yeah. Uh, the best part of the lake, which is where the photo's from, yep. you're not allowed to launch your craft. P.S. Camilo loves the fishing show, boys. Mm -hmm. But Camilo's got a point. Now, off, we've had a fair bit of mail on this, boys, and uh, today I wrote to the former Minister for Fisheries, or Minister Responsible for Fisheries, Bob Cameron, from back 2008, eight, nine, I think, something like that, I think. Yeah. Um, Bob's on the board of Coliban Water, so let's see what... Bob comes back to. I did write to him today to see. See, but surely um, Bob on the job. 
Yeah, I, you can't, it, it doesn't really say why it's closed access there. And I'd, oh, it doesn't say it, but you're thinking that it's because the ramp's next to the wall. No. Well, it th- see this sign here? This, yeah. is, this is in the good part of the lake, right? Oh, it's and easy, the, to, easy to and access. So yeah, the yeah, place yeah. where you can pull up and get your kayak off your roof yeah. and go straight there... And launch it and part. go fishing. That's yeah. the best part. And they won't let them do it. There's, that looks like there's a bit of temporary so, fencing so and a sign up. So what's the deal there? What it, it. Oh, okay. So you, okay, you can't even get down to the water because of the fence. No, I'm told. It, uh, Carmelo said it's only one panel of fence. They've they've yeah. put in one panel of fence so they can attach a sign to it to say no access. So, so what if you just go and put your kayak in? Do you get a fine or? Well, I don't think there's any consequences. Try, try that. Just take a photo when you're there. Just launch it. Well, I. You probably can. I, I, I have no idea. I don't know if they have any authority to stop you. Is there, is there, do they have any authority under bylaws, a water authority? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, that. in all fairness, Bob Bob was a good bloke and um, did a lot for fishing in his time, and we'll see what Bob comes back with next oh. week. But lots of mail on this, and um, I'm sure I'm sure that Bob will sort this out because, yeah. I mean, we had the, the Premier on the show we can probably show yeah, the yeah, clip all next week if we want. Well, it it's on his list, Upper Colliburn River, yep. uh, on water access yeah. for, and not just kayaks, but I'm talking tinnies with electric yeah, yeah, motors. Boats, yeah, well, sorry, um, electric yeah. Inflatable boat. boats, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I mean, the Premier made that commitment, so, and I'm sure Bob was on the... Drones. Like old mate, drone fishing. <laughs> not that, I don't think those drone boats <laughs> are allowed to do that. I reckon Casa might, is it Casa or Casa might have caught up with those guys. But, oh, they were on but, the radar. <laughs> but the Premier did say, you know, tinnies with electric motors, inflatables, yeah, that's right. kayaks, yeah. all sorts. Which makes sense. Um, yeah. Anyway, Bob, Bob was a very good Labor um, fishing supporter. Yeah, get rid of that. And I'm sure he's working yeah. for the Premier now and, and going to get that place open in the next week or so. That's Coliban. All right, this is hey, Trelly. This yeah, is one yeah, for yeah. you. Diane Hartley has written to us. Okay. All right. Hi. Hi, Diane. Right. My husband called me in to watch last week's episode yep. because Trelly told the story about finding an old newspaper with a photo of trout opening from Hartley's of Bendigo. That's correct, I did. From the 1930s and 40s. Yep. That would be Hartley's Fishing and Shooting Supplies, opened yes. by my grandpa, Rube Hartley. Really? In the 1930s. Yep. My dad, Jeff Hartley, worked yep. there from the age 14 until he retired in 2002. And the business was sold but retained the name Hartley's. Yep. Do you still have the newspaper clipping you found under the floorboards? My sister and I, along with some of our cousins, are trying to put together the family history at the moment. We had a family get together last weekend for a behind the scenes tour of Allen's Walk. Yes, which where Hartley's was in Allen's Walk. Where the shop was for 60 years. Jeff. Yep, which is. Yep. And there was a photo and a story about the event in this week's Bendigo Advertiser. Right. Uh, so love to hear a bit of Hartley's history mentioned on your show. Have shared the episode with extended family and uh, they'd like to know more about it, Charlie. Well, if you've, have you got that clip? I do that, have that particular you didn't uh, start, article. You didn't start your fire with pulled, it that night. No, I didn't actually. Yeah, yeah uh, I do have that particular article that's actually framed in my office. Really? So um, so you're quite welcome to um, well, do whatever you like with I'll, that. So, yeah. I'll, send you, I'll send you be Diane's a email. Yeah, that'd be great. Tomorrow. Thank you, Diane. And it'd be great yeah. to uh, pass cool. that bit of um, history on. It'd be that's fantastic. Good, yeah. uh, Mark writes, Adam, this is for you. Because you, you get all the technical it's questions. Kayak, isn't it? No. <laughs> are soft plastics biodegradable? Great question. Some yeah. are and some aren't. Really? Mm. How do you know which ones are and which ones aren't? Ones Says on the packet. Soft plastic. <laughs> <laughs> what? Says on the packet. <laughs> most, of, most, of them, most of them are not. I'm pretty sure the squidgy bio tough, they are. Do you reckon the bio gives it away, that they're uh, biodegradable? Yeah. Yeah, I would put money on <laughs> it. Is there any other things with a bio in their name? No, there's not. To be honest, majority of them aren't. Yep. So when you're done with your plastic, don't yep. take it off the jig head and peg it over the yep. side. Just it's, swallow. Not, it's not a good <laughs> thing. Well, would a whale or a dolphin pass a soft plastic? Oh, I, I, I reckon they would. Oh, if it's I think they would. A whale. Yeah. The size of a whale and a 70 mil flick bait, I reckon it'd pass that. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. Don't know about a turtle or something like that. <laughs> well, some, some of them too, you, you actually thread them on, you use them and you leave them in the sun, they go like a biscuit. Yeah. Like some of the gulp product. I mean, that, that's... Like um, Tim Tam. Well, I think... I yeah, think, they do. No, but I think yeah. gulp does over time. Uh, like, yeah, it does, I'm talking yeah. a lot, like a... Yeah. 
like a plastic bag, a very, yeah. very, very yeah. long. What, time. Like, like 300 years? Or something, I don't, yeah. Well, I, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure. It Lucky golf turtles live to 320. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they're yeah, they, yeah, in their gut for 300 <laughs> years. Can't pass a strawberry seed, but they pass but, one. No, majority, majority of them are not. <laughs> what? Oh, I said they probably did. Turtles are pretty tight. They couldn't pass a you know, strawberry a seed. Strawberry dull, seed. You know, well, pretty pass us off plastic. <laughs> <laughs> the rubbish that comes out of town. People say, what's Trelly like to work with? There you it's, go. Snapshot. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Richard writes, are any fish being caught in Devil Bend Reservoir? Mm -hmm. Adam. There are. Adam. Yeah. The, do, listen, the trout fishing, to be honest, I think has been a little bit subpar. It hasn't been great. Yeah. They need the I think it's just opened. <laughs> no, 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 no. Devil, oh, Bend, stopped, stopped. Devil Bend Reservoir need to take okay. a leaf out of Coliban, Upper Coliban Reservoir's yeah. book yeah. and let tinnies with electric motors on and yeah. ski oh, boats well, and all that stuff. they need to open up the rest of the resi first. Yeah. I know. Because there's some... That's why they need to take a careful weird, look at weird what... Weird little duck that doesn't get out of the, the way or something. No, the speed that Coliban, Upper Coliban Rivers Reservoir is opening up to boats... Yeah. Devil Ben needs to take yeah. a leaf out of there. But anyway, getting oh, back, sure. getting back yeah, to the on. question. Is there any fish biting? Uh, <laughs> uh, trout have been tough, but the estuary perch will start coming on now with a bit of warmth, and they will be of size. They'll be 30-plus centimetres now, mm. and you will catch them late spring, How? all summer, top water. Top water. It is one of the best. Though it does need some water. I heard it's quite low. Mm. So a lot No, of no. Old mate came in today and said it was quite high. Oh, yeah, nice. He was, oh, down, well, there, he was down there today, old mate. It'll be, yeah. it'll be unreal yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Someone else come in and said, Scotty from Tenby, Tenby mm. Point. Oh, mate's mate. Oh, yeah. Scott, yeah, yeah. No, he come in and said good day today. Yeah, I know, yeah. Scotty. He said, can, we, can you remind people, can you remind people to leave their lights in when they're fishing for snapper? Oh, right, eh? Because, because... Well, you need to be seen. Oh, well, you, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you but, do. <laughs> no, but it, this is the time of year. It's still dark at yeah. 7 o'clock. People go out after work or whatever. Dark at what? And it's 7 o'clock at night. Oh, I was say, when do you get up? Yeah. No, I'm talking about at night. <laughs> And people go out on their favourite snapper and they go, oh, I don't want anyone to know where I am. Probably stealth. So they turn their lights off. Yeah. Well, Scotty from Ten well, uh, Point goes... Catches of the week was in my top. I oh, know, but you've got to have your lights on. his lights on. Yeah. Mm. So can you, got, Scotty yeah. said <laughs> you didn't mention that last time we told you to. So. Oh, right. Well, and I don't know whether we mentioned yeah. this one a while back. It came in a little while. Um, uh, dear Mr Kramer and Co, could you please end, could you please end this bar argument? Which end of Port Phillip Bay is the top end? Is it the Melbourne end or the rip end? It's the Melbourne, Melbourne end. end. There yep. you go. Uh, they're yelling at us. If Write you'd like down. to write into Kramer's Mailbag, this is what you do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, PO Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria 3197 or email kramer at ifish.com.au. And coming up next, the all-important hotspots very soon on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. G'day, Callan here from Paul Worthland's Tackle World Cramburn. Supercharged batteries have been supplying maintenance free marine batteries since 2001. The Seamaster Gold Range is second to none, delivering superior starting power and reserve capacity. No need to top up with water, truly a fit and forget battery. With up to two years replacement warranty, you know you have quality. Your battery is your lifeline. Without it, you're dead in the water because it's bloody hard to push start. I've got a Seamaster battery in my body. Make yours a Seamaster Gold today. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And now the segment you've all been waiting for Hotspots, brought to you by Seamaster Batteries. I tell you what, people hang for this bit of the show. They do hot spots. They do. Yeah. They all go there they and they all catch paper fish. Out. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yep. Or well, some, someone take a photo of the screen and stuff. Hot spots. Hotspots, Port Arlington. Let's have, let's kick it off. Calum, calamari. Calum? It's, it's Neil's the, kitchen. Like fishing real well. Yeah, get in a Neil. Get <laughs> in the Neil's, Neil's kitchen. kitchen. You got to wear fishing brew well. overalls <laughs> yeah. from the seventies. Tell you what. Yeah. And um, the calamari are biting off Port Arlington. I tell yeah. you, it's, it's it's quite big. Uh, let's talk about the snapper because there are some early season snapper around at the moment. And if you're going to have a go in Port Phillip Bay, there's no better place yeah. than Mount Martha off deep. About 21 metres will do. Um, you'll, the shipping channel comes in quite close there. Yeah. So get out near there, but not quite in the Pilchard shipping channel. Out. Yeah, Pilchard's this time of year, I reckon it's better. Yeah. Definitely. Um, definitely. Let's head over to Western Port and Gentle Annie. You don't need to be deep this time of year because the fish are looking for patches of warm water. Correct. Um, reports of 
uh, temperatures up, getting close to 14 degrees now at mm -hmm. the top end of Western Port. Because, oh, nice, that's yeah, good. It, it, two weeks ago was 12. Yeah, yeah right. so it's changing quickly. So it's, yeah. it's starting to warm up, and you get up to places like Gentilani, and there's some good snapper on the run out tide, a bit warmer water than mm -hmm. the run in. So try up there for snapper. Another one off Phillip Island, Silver Leaves. Uh, there there you it go, is. Silver Leaves. Always an early starter for snapper, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, silver mm -hmm. leaves. That's become one of the premier yep. Western Port hotspots. Yeah, on a yep. tide change, Eds? Yes. Yep. I still run in tide. Yep. Um, but it does hammer through there, so work around your tide changes because yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. tide's gnarly. Tuck through your lead. Yeah. Yeah, you'll need it. Mm. Something we don't or we haven't spoken about mm. since we've been back on air the last three to four weeks or whatever it is, yeah. um, is the barrel tuna yeah. have been going full yeah, bore down right. at Portland and yeah, we just happens. we just don't cover it and, and we apologise. Yeah, that's because, right. Yeah. Mm, stonk the trout. Well, there was 130 kilo fish caught on a stick bait. Yeah. Yeah. Top water. Yeah, in a like 6,000 size reel. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, an yeah, hour and a half. Yeah. There are some big tuna down at Portland. Yeah. They're just not stopping. Yeah. So um, get down to Portland. And uh, lucky, like, and it's a long weekend this weekend too, isn't it? That's great. It is yeah. too. Grand yep. final eve on Friday. Yep. And uh, La Trobe River, if you want to get down to a nice little wild brown trout Beautiful fishery place. behind yep. the Nuji pub. The Nuji. And ah. just wander up from there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> On the Latrobe River, there's beautiful yeah. Little, yeah, little spinners little or little hard bodies. Pools there. Yeah. Yep. Order the slow cooked meal, <laughs> give you a bit more fishing time. Yeah. <laughs> Get up to the Nuji pub and the Latrobe River. There you go. Probably. Lovely little wild and cold river. It is. Mm. Um, that beautiful place, record too. Record snow at Mount Bauble this year. Still plenty of snow up in the hills, too. Yeah. Not that the snow melt makes a lot of difference, but no. mm. it still Keep contributes. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, anyway, there you go. There's hot spots. So, Very good. Um, for another week. We. Yeah. Um, did I, I think I read something somewhere that with Queenslift becoming free mm. in the ramp department that where now every boat ramp is free, is that right? Almost, almost. There's, um, I got a feeling it might have got, got up on Better Boating Victoria's Facebook page today that Kingston Council last night ah, voted, yep. voted for Morty Alec to be fee free but they're yet to put an agreement in place with Better Boating Victoria. So that may take okay. a couple of weeks. Or a month. Yep. Yeah. No, no, well, it's no, just no. when we'll get the information. Right. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, the agreement will come in a couple of weeks and it'll yeah. take them a month to tell us. Okay. So, yeah. uh, um, but more Alex should be free pretty soon. Yeah. And the only outstanding ones then are the Bayside Council that are saying that it's only free to residents. So if you want to go launch there, bad luck, buddy, because so, you don't live <laughs> in the <laughs> Bayside. So where's all this? You can't launch it. This is, this is really Resident interesting to me straight. because they're supposed to be free, yet all these little loopholes keep popping up there's and the councils keep trying yeah, to take yeah, them. And, and I don't reckon... Um, I so don't they're not free? Well, they, those are no, not, not, not to really. Not to the common man no. who can't afford to live in the B-side suburbs <laughs> of Brighton. Not from a guy from Shepparton. No. <laughs> or Bendigo. Or Crimeburn. Crimeburn. Like, uh, we won't be launching their ads. No. Well, it'll cost... We, we would have to pay launch. So um, I think that's something that Better Boating Victoria will get onto pretty yep. quickly. Yep. So, um, because yeah. surely you'd, you'd think by what well, snapper season basically officially the start is the final sign of the AFL grand final. Yeah, yeah. you'd like to yeah. see everything 100% free, free by yeah. the time the snapper the, season. The other starts. one is I think Walkerville South might be avoiding free boat ramps by just shutting the thing. But they just don't like <laughs> people in general, don't they? <laughs> I don't. I don't think they like anyone, yeah. <laughs> including themselves. I think they actually <laughs> hate themselves. Keep everyone Walkerville off the South <laughs> Committee of Management. Yeah. They, they, they the are a, um, yeah. a, a very good representative division of yeah. Delp. Yeah. <laughs> In that they are yeah. absolutely useless at everything. <laughs> yeah. so, this this but, upper uh, column man thing. Yeah. I mean, we're just hearing about you can't, but the, the, the deterrent as far as. Well, the only place to access it is near the wall, and yeah. it's shut because the wall, it's the water's spilling over the wall. Yeah. So besides, you know, a bit of you know extreme fishing conditions, hmm. um, we don't actually run like they do in other reservoirs. Run like a, a series of buoys. Yep. Upstream from that, say 50 metres or 100 metres. Yep. And clearly, you know, you don't go past this point, which which has happened. Oh, happens. you can have signs on the boys saying don't go past this point? Yeah, that's right. Like the dolphin sanctuary. Hang on, hang on, but, hang on. Um, yeah. gonna, <laughs> like a dolphin sanctuary. Yeah. I'm just going to get Bob Cameron on the phone. Bob, <laughs> Bob. We've sorted it, mate. Tr Trelly's got a good idea. Yeah. yeah. But, no. so, but you see it yeah. in other, other reservoirs, like Ranga Basin, you know, they have this thing. Or yeah, because most of them you're not allowed near the wall things. anyway. Yeah. You know, you think five knots, you can't go in it. Yep. Great. There is a it's few easy. reservoirs like that. Hmm. Where, um, uh, it's resistance. I think it's resistance. To what? To 
kayakers. <laughs> <laughs> Fun in general. Yeah. I don't want to see the kayakers on there. I want to see the tin. <coughs> oh, excuse right. me, tinnies with electric motors. They can be solved. Tinnies. Easily. Hey, what more do you want as a tinny? You can now launch for free. Mm. Give us some kayak only arrangement. No way. Yes. Well, what kayak? What? There'd be no kayak only waters, no way. Boaters are greedy as. Oh, Want everything. But uh, <laughs> you should be able to slow trawl on electric water for yeah. some trophy. Tra I mean, once Upper Coliban get running, which should be in the next week or so, yep. Bob will get onto that, um, <laughs> th then we've got to work on Tarago. Premier sat here Ooh. and said he'd have a look at it. Yeah, that's he's a, he's that's only a got big one. coming up to the one year anniversary of the election. He's got three years to look yeah. at it. Yeah. What would be, the, what would be the crown, the, the jewel in the Tarrigo? crown? Tarrigo. Tarrigo. What about Best. Thompson? No, I reckon the Tarrigo is better. But anyway, they are better. yelling at us. <laughs> that's it for talking fishing. Uh, it is the grand final long weekend, so enjoy the weekend. Get out there fishing. Next week, we have got Tiffany Newton and yep. Nikki Duckstein Nick, on Nick. the show. Nick, Nick. From uh, the Women in Wreck Fishing Network. They'll be on the show next week, guaranteed. Until we see you again next Tuesday on Talking Fishing, please stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. Talking fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son.